What's up, what's up, real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome into another video, one of the last videos. We only have one more after this because we're combining some things, but welcome into D linemen and linebackers. I'm joined with the man, the myth, the legend, the guy whose big board we are talking about right now. JD, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I don't know why I said it like that. Yeah, it's really late at night. You can tell <laughs> the order we've recorded these in, but... Before we get into everything, make sure to check out our Patreon down below if you want to support us. Make sure to check out the MVP Discord if you're not a part of that. And to see this guy's full big board, go over to mostvaluablepodcast.com. Yes, we have a website. Check it out. Link in the description. Like I said, one of the things you can do is check out this guy's full top 25 big board there right now. But JD, before we get into everything, we'll do defensive linemen and linebackers together in this video but we'll start with the linemen the interior linemen not the edge rushers the interior linemen let me know your list for the uh interior linemen so i have jerzon newton uh mckinley jackson and mason smith so one two you only have three on this list yeah for d tackles i do i you know what i'm proud of you you want to know why I'm proud of you, JD? You got my boy. My boy, Newton. I like, we all know Ricky's going to love, like, Ricky is going to love Jerzon Newton the whole year, right? Like, Illinois, if it's an Illinois player, Ricky's going to, that's a reason why I had Devon Witherspoon as my top corner. Ahead of, uh, what was it, Christian Gonzalez? It was him and Gonzalez. Yeah were the top two. And I was like, I don't know. I think I like Witherspoon better. We all know the main reason why I liked Witherspoon a little bit more than Gonzalez. But I'll ask you, you being a Florida guy, not an Illinois guy. What do you see in Newton? Because with me, it's just all orange and blue. There's a <laughs> lot of places that I see have Smith ahead of Newton. Yeah. So I think um, Newton is more of a, pass rush specialist mm -hmm. he's obviously I, I he has a good run blocker as well but he's almost 300 pounds he's six foot two you mean run so, run stopper yeah sorry run stopper yep not blocker talking offense he, for too long man <laughs> yeah yeah no but um yeah he's a good run stopper but i think his pass rush moves he has a really solid toolbox mm -hmm. um already mm -hmm. and that will only grow as he uh gets more experience but you know, he's had the productions there. He He's very explosive out of his stance. And he also, I, I noticed, dealt with a lot of double teams. Mm -hmm. And he succeeded with that. He was still able to find a way to the gap and get to the quarterback. So I think that's that's really good. And, um, yeah, like, I just, I think when you're looking at defensive tackles, you want you want to try and find the next Aaron Donald. And I'm not saying he will be the next Aaron Donald, but mm -hmm. I think out of pass or sorry, out of defensive tackles um, in this class, he offers the most from a pass rush production standpoint. Yeah, I mean, to me right now, there's three guys on my radar personally, Smith at LSU, Newton at Illinois, Hall at Ohio state. And the thing that I think that, and we've talked about this in other videos, but I think it's most precedent here when it comes to these three is with Illinois. One thing that people were saying going against Devon Witherspoon last year is he played at Illinois. Illinois, not usually very high on the like national spotlight where you had like, I guess Christian Gonzalez last year, Oregon hasn't been like, Oregon's national spotlight has not been as big as it was with Chip Kelly. Like they're not what they used to be back in the day, but I look at Smith and I look at Hall, the difference here compared to the Witherspoon uh, Gonzalez part, LSU is going to be on the national stage, especially if like they're going in against Alabama undefeated and Ohio state, Ohio state's going to be on that national stage. Like, it's a double-edged sword because it's good to be on a national stage, more eyes on you, more film on you, scouts are at your games more, but it's a double-edged sword of there's more notoriety on you to where if you play bad, people are able to see it. 
Yeah. And not saying that no one will see Newton if he doesn't play well this year, but like I just think of that as will Hall and Smith get most of the hype because one's at LSU, one's at Ohio State, and Newton's at Illinois. And let's be honest, I don't know how to like me as an Illinois fan, I don't know what to think of the Illinois season this year because we should be a good team. But like, let's be honest, we're not going to be on the same level as Ohio State and Michigan. Like, we may not yeah. even win our side of the Big Ten. Let's be completely honest. Wisconsin's a good team. Iowa always plays us tough, no matter how good or bad Iowa is. So it's like, I don't even know what to expect from this season from us overall. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because you also you lost the Brown Twins. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. There. I was hoping they'd stay. <laughs> I mean, hey, Chase Brown the Bengals, I can't. <laughs> but uh no nah, but um no it's i i get what you're saying but i think truthfully like uh newton's not gonna be able to hide like mm-hmm. from being in illinois like i don't think that will matter just because i'm not of- saying hide just like i'm just saying like he's not gonna get the hype that a hall or a smith will get is what i'm I, saying see i think he will because as of right now i don't think this is a very deep edge class or sorry, okay. a very, D-line very clash. deep uh, D-line class. So I think the teams that are going to be trying to go for that interior defensive line, they're they're going to stick out, mm-hmm. right? So I think, in my opinion, Newton being the best one right now, I think he's going to get all that spotlight from, um, from draft media, from other draft fans, from everybody. So I think he I think he will get his flowers um then. I mean, I hope you're right because like last year last year for Illinois started out really well. We started out only losing one game to Indiana. We were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and one to start the season. But then ever since the Michigan State game, lost to Michigan State, lost to Purdue, lost to Michigan beat Northwestern, thank God, then lost to Mississippi State in our bowl game. Like, I think Illinois, one of the big things, and this is going to help Newton, obviously, if we can win our side of the Big Ten and the defense can be strong and a force, especially just in the West, I think that's going to help tremendously. I like. I hope you're right. I hope he's... The first D line off the board, hoping first round talent, even though I don't know, we got to play the games. But like, that's what I look at looking in. But you said that right now it's only three players. Do you think this this line class is going to get any deeper? Do you think players will come out of the woodwork? Like, is this just how it is because it's preseason? I think this is how it is because it's preseason, Mm -hmm. but. I don't think you'll see like I like five guy five like D tackles mm-hmm. go in the first round. I think you might only see two D tackles go in the first round. Okay. And then yeah, but I think there will be other guys pop up like second round or third round and so on. But I just don't think that this is a very deep D uh D tackle class right now. I mean, you're talking about uh uh a weak D tackle class. JD, uh, just for reference, give me your linebacker ratings really quick. Cause this is going to be quick. Uh, so at one, I have Barrett Carter Two, I have Jeremiah Tr- uh, Trotter three. I have Deshaun pace and four. I have Danny Stit- uh, Stitzman. Yeah. Here's my problem about the linebackers. They're not very deep and I don't know how much deeper they're going to get when it comes to top end talent, because you listed off four names, JD tankathon only has two. Like oh. <laughs> this is, this, they only have the Clemson boys, Carter and Trotter. Not yet yeah. again. They do. I think how they do it is they have their top one or top 70 right now. And if you ain't in that top 70, they only have two linebackers in their top 70. Like, is, could this be, we talked about wide receiver being the class. Could this be the 
non-class of the draft where it's like, hey, if you need a linebacker for 2025, or I'm sorry, for the 2024 season, look to free agency because you ain't going to get it in the draft. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. Um, obviously, these guys can turn heads this year, mm-hmm. but I mean, if, just if you can't tell by my voice and how I'm acting, this is like uh-huh. the positional group that I you're like I'm I want, bored. <laughs> I've yeah, I've watched not a lot, but I've watched enough tape on these guys, and I wanted to do 45 other different things. <laughs> It is. It, it, it's not a good class so far. Oh, who is the Cle- I'm already forgetting. Who was the Clemson guy last year that I did not like? Oh, that they had ranked way too high edge rusher. Oh, Miles Murphy. In yeah. The Bengals. It, is it like watching Miles Murphy tape? <laughs> I actually enjoyed watching Miles Murphy. Yeah, a I, little bit, but, I did not. Yeah. I did. I did not want. I did not want to watch a guy get bodied up by offensive linemen for an hour. <laughs> like if I'm watching a should be top 10 in the draft edge rusher, I want to see him get to the quarterback at least once. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's like I was right. watching like, some Boston college film. Now I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. Do you want to mm-hmm. know the only reason why I watched Deshaun pace tape? Why? Because since I'm on Cincinnati Bengals, Twitter, <laughs> obviously a lot of the yes. UC fans uh-huh. were like hyping him up. And I watched him just to see, and honestly, like, he, I think he actually will be a good player. Mm-hmm. Maybe not a top five, top ten linebacker in the league, mm-hmm. but I actually do like his tangibles. Yeah. I think he's a smart player. He's a hard nose uh, hitter. But um, yeah, but that, that that I would have never really known about him if uh, yeah if I wasn't on Bengals Twitter. Well. JD, that's going to do it for this video. Might be one of the shorter ones, but hey, sometimes you get that, especially early in the year when you want to touch things, but uh, there's just these might be the we- the two weakest classes of uh, of the draft this year. But you guys let us know what you guys think down below. Who do you think is going to pop off? Who maybe didn't we list that you think will be a name come draft time? Uh, Check out that Patreon link down below. Check out that Discord link. The website MVP uh, Most Valuable Podcasts. Check out JD's full top 25 big board. Thank you guys for everything you do. And as always, I hit my microphone. Have a good day, everybody. As always, we'd like to thank the people that make these videos possible. Our patrons whose names are displayed on the screen now. If you would like to become a patron, go ahead and click the Patreon icon in the bottom right. And if you'd like to check out another video from MVP Sports, hit the video in the upper left. As always, thanks for watching.